when uh, Evangeline got in touch with me and said, we'd like to induct you into the Hall of Fame, I was like, wow, what an honor. And I kept, first thing I kind of thought was like, I, I don't think I'm quite that old enough yet. I haven't done enough yet. And she said, trailblazer, trailblazer. And the first thing I kind of thought, trailblazer, okay. You know, what does that mean? You know, we, we kind of think someone that comes before everyone else. And, you know, like the old-fashioned speakers get out, I said, let me get out my dictionary. What does trailblazer mean? Trailblazer, a person who makes a new track through wild country. That was one definition. Well, the field of law, definitely wild country. <laughs> but another definition is a person who makes, does, or discovers something new and makes it acceptable or popular. I think that definition more fit. People, when you go to law school and you decide that you want to be a lawyer, that's what everyone's doing here, but there's more to it and more to life. And I always thought, as an African-American lawyer, female lawyer, that we had misconceptions about us out there, the stereotypes. I lived my life sometimes even downplaying the fact that I was an attorney because the stereotypes of what people uh, imagined as a woman attorney, that you had to be a certain kind of way to be successful, that you had to be a B word. And I found myself far from that. And most of the women that I knew that were successful lawyers were very far from that. Now, don't get me wrong, some of our profession has a lot of that there. Because sometimes to be a woman in this profession, you have to do more, you have to speak louder, you have to be recognized. And so a lot of women fit a certain profile, and that exists. And after being an attorney and spending my life fighting for others, I think people didn't understand what we went through. So when people say to me, how did you come up with this idea of sisters-in-law? Well, I, I remember probably about eight or nine years ago when the advent of reality TV came out and everybody was watching it. And we, people were glued, Real Housewives of Atlanta, you know, Hollywood exes, everything. And I kept thinking, those aren't like women that I know. These are women, these women got to be famous and girls were looking up to them and wanted to be like them because of who they married, who they had babies from, you know, and how much money and how good they looked and all this stuff, petty stuff. But women I know weren't like that. I surrounded myself with women that were intelligent, that, that made their own money. Yes, they drove nice cars that they paid for that the man didn't buy. And I thought that women, young women, need to see more of that. And, and not so much all of the baby mama drama. So I came up with this idea, and I, and I thought, I don't know anybody. I don't know anybody in the TV industry. I don't know anybody except that I just kind of thought, this is a great idea. And I'm a firm believer of, of positive thinking. You know, a lot of people talk about the secret, and I tell people my life is the version of the secret. Dream it, and it will happen. Believe it, it will happen. Dream big, dream bigger, it will happen. And, and that's the absolute truth. People go, how did, how did that happen? I had this idea, I wrote it down. I wrote it down. You know, they say, your dream's supposed to write them down, right? Think about them. And you're supposed to work at them, but sometimes things are just meant to happen. I had this idea, I wrote it down, and, I'm, and you know what, I'm embarrassed to say I was never really even a fan of reality TV. But I knew that young people were fans of reality TV. And I knew that my purpose in life was to teach and to bring more purpose to young people, to encourage them. And I thought that's a way to get people to see that there are alternatives. I wanted young women to see that you could be successful and you could have your own money and change the lives of other people and contribute to society. 
that there were other things that were just as glamorous. Because every female lawyer I know is like me. We are glamorous, OK? We are glamorous people that change lives, like Miss Alma. So I came up with this concept, didn't know anybody. And how the secret, and if you believe in prayer and everything else, the universe just creates and makes a way where you didn't even know. I sat one day. I had a friend who started dating someone that was famous. And she came to my house hanging out. And, and, and my friend says, tell her about your TV show idea. I said, oh, you know, it's just this. Told this person about the idea. Oh my God, that's a fabulous idea. Two months later, producers are coming down to Houston and saying, let's make it happen. And a year later, this, this woman who had never known anything about television had a TV show, eight episodes on WeTV, where you got to see the inside life of my life and the lives of women that I know. Now, yeah, was it a little drama? And it is a little because. We're African-American successful women, and our lives sometimes are drama. But in the end, people saw that exactly what I wanted them to see, that every one of us, all six of us on that show, did it ourselves. We didn't marry a man to become a lawyer. We were the ones in law school studying hard. We were the ones that came up from poverty. We were the ones that were raised by single moms or had been abandoned by their families, or saw one of the characters, saw her dad kill, kill himself in front of her. We all went through difficult things, but the one thing that we had in common is the fortitude to go through it and to get over it, and to go through law school, which for, all, for everyone here was the hardest thing that any one of us had ever, ever done, except being a mom. Sometimes it's hard. <laughs> and, um, and women started seeing that. And the thing that was so amazing to me is exactly what happened. Young women like Skye, who, when she saw me today, said she was so excited. I lit up when I saw you because I started getting the emails. I started getting the, the notes on uh, the direct messages on Instagram. I want to be like you. And that's my purpose. And that's what I was meant to do. And every day, I'm in the courtroom. I'm fighting for people that, as a, I spent many years, spent five years as a public defender. I'm now back in private practice. But my whole goal is to help people have excellent representation and bring compassion to the criminal defense um, and to do something to make a difference every day. If anybody ever watched sisters-in-law, and people talk about the compassion. That's what I do every single day. I want to change the life of someone. And as we talked about bringing some, giving someone else an opportunity, I give young people every day an opportunity to change the trajectory of their lives, to go from this one way of the bad decisions that you made and having faith and knowing that just because you made a bad decision doesn't make you a criminal. It can change. And I love being that. And so for that, yes, am I a trailblazer? Thank you. Yes, I am. And so are you. And everybody that I make a way, Ms. Alma made a way, Mr. Fry makes a way, and the wonderful Craig Washington, who I'm sorry that he couldn't be here because he was my mentor. And he opened the door for me in Houston, Texas, when I was a young law student. And we hope to do the same for you. And for everyone here, I, and the last thing, I'm going to make some two little aside things. I made little notes here. I was a non-traditional student. Earlier today, one of the young ladies said, it's a lot of you that come straight out of college, I admired that. Um, but I was non-traditional, meaning I didn't decide what I wanted to do until later on, in, in it was, you know, late 20s, not knowing exactly. And I like to tell people, people look at me, and I tell my clients a lot of times, I was lost. Sometimes you're lost. You go to college and you can't figure out exactly what you want to do. I'll tell anyone, I changed my major five times. Five. Started pre-med, started nursing, started business. And then finally I figured out that I was really good at learning and knowing the law and analyzing it. 
I didn't want to do that, but I was called to do that. And then when you figure out your purpose, everything else falls in place. But I still, life takes you, takes you on a different way. I became a wife, I became a mother, and law school didn't look like it was going to happen. Until one day I woke up and I said, if I don't grab it now, it's gonna be gone. And I literally, one day, before, the week before my 28th birthday, called, back then we just have to call to register for the LSAT. <laughs> we didn't have online. <laughs> called, said, I want to take the LSAT. They said, it's in, next, it's in next week. It's next week. Okay. Got in the books. We had books then, you know, you go to the <laughs> <laughs> books, studied two weeks. And uh, I said, okay, if, if this is what's meant to be for me, I'll do well on the LSAT. I'm only applying to one school, and I only apply to Thurgood Marshall School of Law. And if I don't get in, and that's not meant for me to happen. Of course, you know what happened, because here I am. So be, I was a non-traditional student, like Christina, a mom. But I got you beat. I had a three-year-old, and I was pregnant with the second one. And I worked three jobs. <laughs> and I worked three jobs, OK? So when you, when you make up your mind, nothing can stand in the way. And that, so there was the other thing I want to say. And then the last thing, one of the speakers earlier today talked about, what did she say, something about hashtag squad goals? Is that what Demetria talked about? Your squad goals. Who, who you carry yourself or who is with you, it makes a difference. It makes a difference. And on the last note with that, I want to talk about and introduce my squad goal. Sonia Allen, she's an attorney here in North Carolina. We met freshman orientation at the University of Alabama, 17 and 18 years old. We've been best friends, and we are both lawyers. And we are both have been public defenders. So it does make a difference who you surround yourself with. And uh, it matters. And the last thing is, for those of you that were thinking about being public defenders, and then earlier today they put that thing up there about the salaries, and you said, oh, no, I don't think I can do that. <laughs> not true, baby, not true. That was not true. We are both public defenders, and in this day and age, trust me, we make bank, okay? <laughs> so. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>